So we're replacing the oxygen sensor, downstream oxygen sensor, 2010 Mazda CX-7, 2.5 liter non-turbo. This is not the one with the turbo. So, front of the engine, there's your master cylinder, or brake reservoir. There is your, directly behind the engine, the first one you come to is, uh, I think they call that the upstream sensor, right there. And you can just barely see the downstream one right there. Sensor 2 downstream. And it has a couple of clamps. There's one. There's the other. That have to be taken off. But those clamps are built onto the new oxygen sensor. They, those don't come off. And your wire goes up. Uh, I don't think you can see where it connects. I'll try to get a better view. So here's the oxygen, sen oxygen sensor I got from uh, Rock Auto. And I think it was about $70. But there's those clamps. They're already, they're already uh, fastened onto the the wire, the cable. So the thing about Rock Auto is you gotta make sure you had ordered the right part because you don't want to send anything back to them because their uh, return policy is uh, sometimes difficult to deal with. So very carefully open the box. See I didn't break the seal here. And check that you have the right part. If you open this bag, it's yours. Um, so anyways, yeah, be very careful with parts, or trying to return parts. They are very picky. Oh, so, okay, so quick, uh, little background info here. So, I was driving it, and P0138 code kept popping up, so I cleared it. It would come up again. I cleared it. And then P2096 starts popping up. And I think they're related. So I went ahead and ordered the uh, oxygen sensor. Got it. Decided to clean the mass airflow sensor, which I just did an hour ago. Cleaned it. Didn't clear any codes. Cleaned it, put it back on, drove it for not even 10 minutes. The codes went away. So. Do I replace that oxygen sensor or do I not? But if I can get it off and it looks like everything's going to work smoothly, I'm just going to replace it. Since I've got it, I've already paid for it. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's your oxygen sensor under the car now. Should be standard 7 8 I guess. So I haven't checked it. There's one of those clamps right there. And the other one is right up there, somewhere. And to con disconnect the wire, there's your cross member. <clears throat> and that's where your wire connects, right there. Sorry, my camera's not the best, but there's your connection right there. Got a zip tie right there. Wire goes back and connects onto those clamps. If I have any trouble with those clamps, I'm just going to bypass them. Try and zip tie to the existing clamps. All right, so I, I got the cable. Sorry, got the cable disconnected. There it is. Yeah.
and I've also taken off these clamps. Now you can spread these clamps, I didn't know that. There's a little screw right there, those little screws. Take those little screws out and you can spread those clamps. Which is good, because then you don't have to cut the wire. You slip the 7 8 right over the end and go all the way up and get it on there. Make sure you can get the old one off before you start cutting any wires. That's what I want to do anyways. I've been soaking that thing. I knew I was going to change it, so I've been soaking it for a week. You know, once a day I'll go out and spray some WD-40 on it. Let's see if it worked. So here's the old one. It's off. I have no idea, if, no way to tell if it's 100, let's see, just shy of 100,000 miles. It came right off. One quick snap. I got this long 7 8, seven eight uh, box wrench. Didn't have to cut the wire. Just slip it over the end, take it right down. And here's the new one. Looks the same to me. I think so. So there should be anti seize on here. And I think NTK is OEM. Finger tight. And then a quarter turn. Yeah, it looks like it. So, anyways, not too hard of a job. The upstream sensor, I think, would be a lot easier. Good luck.